wish you guys to sit here two days. Then we go to your own house and your own bed. And you come out of here and you figure out how to live the way I'm doing. Because you, 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 you challenge the way I'm challenging, how do you do it? And <laughs> go more to it. You know? Really, I'm, I don't want to live out in the tent. Like, this is not, not fun. But, I mean, it's not fun, but it's the way I gotta live and the way I gotta survive. So, I mean, you know, I'm a surviving person. I, I, I know how to survive myself, but this, this surrounding set. Somewhere a few months ago, this is about nine years. Uh, nope, this year is actually next La session. Last year was last year was binding, yeah. Okay, and they put aside like four billion dollars for affordable housing. Not four billion. Uh, they put a, it's a significant amount. No, that was just awarded. So the awards just came out this week, actually. So I'm be able to tap into that. Yeah, if you look at the, you could Google MHFA or Minnesota Housing Finance Agency, and there's a list. I think it's 57 different projects that got funding and so that's good that's news good yeah. um, and I mean, projects will take anywhere from three to six years to build and so yes you know if if we want to think positively there are people who leave homelessness every week there are people who enter treatment every week there are yeah. there are people I mean, who move into housing every we week we meet them every every right. week we meet and so so our challenge is just that um, people are coming faster than they're leaving. So if you if you know that old parable of pulling babies out of the river, and so you're pulling some babies, and then we all gather and we're all pulling babies, and we're so busy pulling babies out of the river, nobody has time to go upstream and figure out where all the babies are coming from. And so that's what we've been doing, because we're just trying to get homeless people in, into shelter, into treatment, into housing that we don't go back and say, oh, they're coming from corrections and they're coming from foster care and they're coming from apartments they can't afford. And so there is some of that upstream work happening, but just it's not happening as fast as they're coming. So every day people leave homelessness and every day people enter homelessness. Yeah, and another easy statistic um, from the Family Housing Fund, which is a statewide statistic, is that there are 100,000 people vying for 30,000 units. And so just think of the math that way. Well, like 100,000 trying for 30,000. I mean, people yeah. get them and it's a like five year waiting list, or one year. Or yep, it's something. a variety of I mean, time. What happens in the meantime? 
Right, and so some people move in with people, some people get roommates, some people um, resolve their own Another housing grandma. situation, and there's a sliver of people who don't have any of those options and are homeless. And then there's even a smaller sliver who are not in shelter and who are outside. Yeah. So this is the sliver of the sliver. guy up there. Yeah. Yeah. So she's going to move down by the river. So one thing I'd like to recognize as we get up kind of into the main cluster is just to observe how many law enforcement, city employees, um, public works people, the amount of resources that are being used at taxpayer expense to move 40 people. It's extraordinary. And these, these are well-paid, relatively speaking, people. At least well-paid compared to you know, shelter workers who might be making $14 an hour. Yeah.
all of us have or worked all over the city. Oh, okay. so. So some of them will be in about six other St. Paul neighborhoods. Okay. And um, we, for those of us who work in homelessness, we haven't heard of other ideas besides the trains and outside in other St. Paul neighborhoods. So do you have any other ideas? I mean, we know there's the 14 spots. We've got a couple of the safe spaces, but people don't. They may or may not want to go there. Yeah, these yeah. folks may not, but they'll, they'll be full. Yeah. I mean, with. 300 plus people who are outside in Ramsey, we know those 14 spots will be full, so we don't need to worry about those being empty. What I can tell you is that us three right here, uh -huh. the van, we're just here to, if they need a ride somewhere, okay. it doesn't matter we'll to us where there. it is, we'll take them. Alright, great, thanks. Good, yep, we can do that. Yep. If they're agreeable to that. So, um, St. Paul Police have offered to give rise to Minneapolis. I think that's important to recognize. You, you could talk to the woman at the end of the van or the man with the short hair. So, um, to, to, the, to the encampment in Minneapolis? Where, where? It's wherever people want to go. So, you could ask if they um, I'd rather you like, give it three minutes since I just stepped away and you just told me. But, um, you could just say, are you willing to give rides to the Minneapolis encampment or to Minneapolis? Um, and uh, I believe that there's a Caucasian woman at a tent on this side that does plan to go to Minneapolis. So I think that's important to recognize, especially for the start to you. Well, you know, I hate to say uh, I'm a St. Paul native, but I still live in St. Paul. So it's like, uh, everyone does that. Why is the Minneapolis people care about St. Paul? I actually cover St. Paul neighborhood kids. But, um, but I get it. Uh, so, so I guess, and I grew up in St. Paul and lived in Minneapolis. And, yeah. and um, so what I'm trying to impose upon people or impart upon people is, well, we have people here who are offering rides to other St. Paul neighborhoods to sleep outside. And we have law enforcement and people who are offering rides to Minneapolis. So this is a complete shell game with people's lives. And they are, I told you that because I already said that somewhere else. But, <laughs> but well, Monica, uh, what it is a shuffling of human beings and whatever Ricardo you want to say. Ricardo Cervantes says I that, to, yeah. Ricardo says that they will have a referral everyone in this encampment who wants uh -huh. for, for tonight and the next seven days. Yeah, there, there are hundreds of people who have referrals. A referral that's a shelter name. Well, they're claiming the referral will get them into the shelter tonight and the next seven days. Ask him if that's for more than 14 people. I can do that with you. So, so do they have, ask him how many referrals they have. Do they have 20? Do they have 40? I'm live streaming now. <laughs> so we've heard from St. Paul Police that they are willing to give rides to Minneapolis. Um, we know that some people will move to Minneapolis for um, shelter outside. I shouldn't say shelter inside, to sleep outside. Um, there are also community volunteers here who are offering to drive people to various neighborhoods in St. Paul to sleep outside throughout the city of St. Paul. Try to get everything. Wow. Nice of them. Yeah. They yeah. seemed very happy that we were here. Uh -huh. and, uh, oh, yeah. 
Um, we've got another five families coming from down that end. And I'm going to have you guys talk to this young man for a minute. He's uh, the first one that was wanting to go and looking to change his life. And he's got some issues he's dealing with, but he's a kid. He's 21, for God's sake. we got to help. And this whole thing is new. Hi, Monica. I'm Lydia Marie. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, brother, I want you to come here. Do you mind talking to these guys? Uh, sure. Okay. And I suspect that when they said that, they didn't necessarily think through what they were saying, and they're trying to be helpful and saying. And so I, I introduced the fact that there are City of St. Paul residents here who are offering to bring people to sleep outside in Highland and Macrovlin and Como and Phelan. And um, I asked if the officers are from the downtown district, and they said, no, we're from the districts all over. So. I hope they're recognizing that we're just moving people to various I districts. I asked about the show. You saw the interview. He, he avoided the question. Marco, can you some of your information? Yeah. Yeah. Young man, someone told me to tell you if you are 24 and under, you can visit the safe zone at 130th East 7th Street, downtown St. Paul. Well, no, I'm going back to Minneapolis. You're going back to Minneapolis? Okay. Yeah, I'm from Minneapolis, and okay. I know Minneapolis are about their people. St. Paul don't give a fuck about their people. Wow. What brought you over here? They really don't, especially not the police. The police, they want to play face, they be two-faced. In all honesty, they've been more and more aggressive about doing this. As a matter of fact, they come through here at 3 a.m. with three, four squad cars with loudspeakers telling us all the leave. And then they've been playing creepy-ass music when they slide through. I don't know. So I'm Monica. I'm Nico. Nico, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what brought you over here? Honestly, my family. I have bro my brothers were down here, my auntie, your uncle. In St. Paul? Yep. Honestly, the whole reason why I'm really homeless is they uh, have a history, you know, so like my past kind of screwed me over. But so family's I, in St. Paul, but you're familiar with Minneapolis. I have family here in St. Paul, Minneapolis. I'm actually helping my family move out of St. Paul, and we're all going to Minneapolis. Can you tell me again what the police were doing here in St. Paul? Honestly, uh, the St. Paul Police Department, at first, like, they were cool. Like, look, I've been doing this down here since, like, March, May, okay? Everything was good. I got arrested in June, spent three months and nine days in jail. I come, I get out, come back to my stuff, and it's a whole different ball game. They're over here, it's out, like, forcefully moving us. They'll come through here, have us move out. But like, if we're not there with our stuff, like let's say, for example, like me and you are like, chill, like we have a tent, right? Yeah. Me and you are out at work and they come through, they show up and they just tear our shit down and throw it away. So why are you going to Minneapolis again instead of staying in St. Paul? Because Minneapolis is actually about their people. They help. The Minneapolis, like, the city itself, like they do more for their people than St. Paul will ever do. You said at night they will come through. What do they do at night? At nighttime, they come through with like three, four squad cars in a row. Their headlights on, their fog lights on, their running lights on, and their cherries and berries on. On loudspeakers telling us that we need to move up by this time or that, otherwise they're just going to tear everything down. They'll come through at night playing creepy ass clown music. These folks are going to take care of you. What's your name, brother? Oh, yeah. What's your name, brother? Nico. Nico. Yep. Bless you, brother. Thank you. Brother Cross gonna take care of you. Yep, yep. Come on over. <laughs> um, you got more room. Oh, yeah. I'm actually helping uh, my family move back to Minneapolis, too. All right, Red. Red. Chad, Chad right. from uh, Pioneer Press is asking. I know it does. It's a great job. Yeah. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna text you that guy's yeah, number. Yeah, do that, man. I got that. I want you to take care of that first. All you gotta do is more helpers. We bring them over there. He wants to get the above the garage just with the fish out Interestingly. He said, I just want to acknowledge where the donation of the tent is going to Okay. That's that a works. nice tent. No, we need that. Ready. Yeah, we should. Ready. I mean, I got, you know, yeah, I'm trying to get, that's not a good like, when I talk to him, I'll get him to put the camera. It's a good thing, thing but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to go. I know what they don't want to go. Oh, yeah, I know. I know you're the right man. Oh, no, no. I'm saying the fact that they're including. I can't believe St. Paul police are dropping people off in Minneapolis. Well, let's just see when Tad comes back. He's from the Pioneer Press. Um, he went up, ran up to the van to ask if the load they had right there was going to Minneapolis. I don't know if it is well, or not. We had to help them when they meet them in, where they're at, right? 
Like well, I told them, just because this is St. Paul and it's the it's the capital, that's why they're doing this. Yeah, I got people. You say Minneapolis, on, on Facebook, there, and they're doing good. Like, yeah, I said, man, just gets everyone's here taking people to the other encampment because they got nowhere to go. They're like, man, where's the money? What's going on? Yeah, the city needs to step up with more shelters and just lack of shelters. Yeah. I've been telling them, it's just the barriers are keeping people homeless. Don't you fallen. hook up a big meeting and section? Fall? You know, people get on law for the ten as they last. They, 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 they stick like on your name for seven thing? years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's going to keep you homeless for seven. They're coming years. back out from those shelters. It's only yes. going to be a week long. But then only just a like they put on our camp. They, no, they're they're going to be able to be there yeah. unless you not free, free, free it's also process yourself, right? The argument now is. So There's we let 14 them know. Beds we the voice so we'll wait till yeah. the 14 beds are full, and then this will all bubble up again. All right. So there's always no people are transitioning into permanent housing every day from the shelters. You know, so there's they're, always room. There's, yeah. and there's always room. homeless every day. Yeah. So every county can tell you now because we have coordinated entry. <laughs> How many people are coming in newly homeless every day? That's one good thing about coordinated entry is now we can see how many people are. Just, and obviously not everybody goes to coordinated entry, but there's one measure of data of how many people are coming newly homeless each day is these coordinated entries. And people are losing their houses. People are they losing, connected with the DLC to uh -oh. see if when they recidivist, what, what was their barriers? I have, I have gotten that data that... Um, Last yes. time I asked I'm stirring the Department up crap. of Corrections, um, they had driven oh, 520 man. people to Union Gospel Mission or Harbor Light in one year. That's that Why? isn't that isn't the most recent year, no. but that is one piece of data. Hi, hey, Monica. Travis. Give a second. Yep. So we'll be there. All right. We'll be over there. Go. Last time everyone got kicked out, I happened to be here about four o'clock that afternoon. Build them right back up. No, by four o'clock. You mean? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I know. And we'll see if that happens today. So. Yeah. Just thought, yeah. Is that, is that, That's Jim. Oh, sorry. Then I'm just wrong. Space our newsroom. We 
lean a bunch of people out. Maybe they can make oh, some copies. Oh, that's, that's painful to hear. That is. Um, oh, yeah, they're throwing them over on the west side. Uh, but I, was it the pregnant lady that was in that hand? I didn't see who they loaded up. Okay, because so. she was talking about going over to the west side. For a couple of days. This woman, the blonde woman who near the gold coat, I believe she's going to Minneapolis. So, yeah, I didn't know who they loaded up first. So, what do you know about Lydia? Um, she carries a gun. She gets in fights. Um, she, I, a little concerned having to be. MnDOT's going to do the cleanup, and they don't really have a hard time, and so uh, I suspect they're just going to let it slowly happen. And, yeah, and they I just, don't think they're going to force it. They want people to leave, I and I, I suspect they want to do as little cleaning as possible, so they're going to hope that people will clean up after themselves, and then they'll go through and clean up, and... Probably in a few days there will be people back for sure in the woods and um, maybe not visibly right out here and they'll just be elsewhere in the city. Exactly. Uh, 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 we don't work together, right? right. But we haven't had any beers together. We haven't had. We should. Though, right? right? You've never been to one of our bonfires. My wife went to this one. Oh, okay. so, tried to have it. We tried to get a couple of people over. 